We are back with more of my Southern Home and I'm here with Andrew Thompson with Andrew Thompson Construction and Anna Brown with Anna Brown Interiors. And I'm so happy to have you guys here with me today because we're gonna talk about the important conversation that homeowners need to know right now about supply chain issues and the process of remodeling a home like the one we're in. Um, and Andrew, you and Anna worked together on this project and it took a while to get where we are right now. It, it did, uh, even with proper planning, uh, we still had challenges. A great example of that on this job is uh, the clients chose a specific uh, gas range that they liked and we got word from our preferred supplier, uh, A1 Appliance, that they were not gonna have that, uh, that range come in in time. So we pivoted, we were able to go in and go with a different uh, range that the client was happy with. So that's what you have to be able to do in the times that we're living in now. And Anna, you're the designer of this gorgeous home and you, you helped the homeowner. What was the process from start to finish to get here with the challenges that we have right now? Well, in design, we always try to have a full uh, picture of what the project is going to look like. Um, but in times like these, it's even more important to have everything selected, everything um, very close to being ordered. So we have it ready for when Andrew's ready to go. We have everything, all the supplies here. So when you mentioned having all the supplies here, once the design is put together and you've decided on everything for a client, you really need to pull the trigger right now because it could take six months for windows, it can take six to eight months for appliances, and it could take the same amount of time for lighting if you have specialty um, statement features that you want in your home. Yeah, it used to be a lot easier to find things that were in stock or readily available, but now or the lead times are so much more that you have to be flexible in, in your design as well. And um, that's nice that we're, you have a team that works together, so we have good relationships with people where they are always able to help us um, come up with the things we need. And Andrew, Anna just mentioned having a team that works together a lot. You use the same contractors, and the reason that that's important is that these subcontractors that you work with are going to help you and they're going to be there for you and they're going to find ways to make everything happen because of the loyalty your company gives them and that's really important in times like these. It sure is. Um, you know, I've been in business for 16 years and some of the people that worked on the first house I ever built are still with me. Uh, we're still with some of our preferred suppliers from 16 years. And it's not um, if something happens, it's when something's gonna happen. You have to be able to rely upon uh, those preferred suppliers. You know, people are struggling to even get appliances installed, much less appliances in the country or, or getting their hands on appliances to be able to you know, get them onto a property. But the good thing is, is since I've been in business for 16 years, this is the way that we've always worked. We always try to go in and have at least 85 to 90 percent of the project known uh, and at least on order. You know, our custom cabinetry has to be in production before we start a job. Our appliances, our plumbing fixtures, and whatnot. You know, this is not that much of a change from what we've been doing, and that makes it so much easier when you get into these different times. And Anna, Andrew has a good point because, you know, it's not all doom and gloom right now. It's using professionals that are trusted in the industry and planning and knowing what you want in advance before you pull that trigger. Yeah. It's really all about setting expectations. You know, that's some of the hardest things that we have to do uh, is sit down and, and make people aware of labor challenges and supply chain challenges, pricing challenges. We can get through this thing together but it's all about sitting down before you ever pull a permit or you ever you know, sign a contract. What do you expect from me? Because here's what I expect from you. And Anna, what does that planning process look like right now? Well, I, I try to help the client um, get a vision of what the whole project is going to look like. Um, and that's sometimes difficult to do. Um, we um, select finishes and lighting and everything that complements another, but they may not have been able to touch and feel it in, the, in this time because we haven't gotten to go to a showroom where it's in stock or, or something like that. And so how much time is involved for a homeowner? So let's just say, you know, this was a whole home remodel. So from start to finish, just the planning process, how long does that usually take? Depending on how long the client takes to make decisions, we can spend four to six weeks just on the design alone um, and then selecting finishes and the purchasing and procurement. 
And then that's when you come in, if there's a designer involved, and you, you transform it into what we're in today. Right, we, we do what's called a justification budget, where we go in and it's allowance-based budget to just make sure that the homeowner is aware of the price range that we're looking at for what their needs are. But there's also something that's very important to remember. The more choices that you make up front, the more information you're able to share with your subcontractors. Uh, different specs on lighting or plumbing fixtures or whatnot all have to be taken into consideration to properly bid a job. Well, and Anna, you talk about allowance budgets. That's really important because if you haven't remodeled a home and you haven't built a custom home, that is a term that could be new to you. And you want to make sure that the allowances that the contractor is giving you match your design style and the types of lights, flooring, cabinetry you would like in your home. Yes, I think, and that goes back to what Andrew was saying and about setting expectations and educating the client when the project first starts of what their budget is actually going to get them. Um, and then as a designer, um, presenting other um, options for them when that budget maybe is too high or, um, or they can afford something a little bit better. Thank you guys so much for being with me today here at this gorgeous house and, and kind of giving information about what the landscape looks like right now. It's so important. Thank you. Thank you for having us. We'll be back with more My Southern Home in just a moment.